Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Now this one's long overdue. One of my friends on Twitter actually suggested this tutorial quite a while ago, about a month ago actually, but I was busy with the exam, so um, I kind of put it off because there were some errors going on with this tutorial. Uh, so I'm back now, I've fixed up everything, well, as much as I could, uh, which is pretty much everything. Um, and I'm sharing this tutorial with you guys. So I hope you guys had a nice uh, long weekend for the Easter holidays. I'm not too sure if other countries like the United States and India had a long weekend, but in South Africa we did. So I just took a rest for the whole week because I just wanted to. So we're back with this tutorial. Now, as you guys can see, one of my friends on Twitter suggested a tutorial on how to make a tray icon. And he also linked up the uh, Dropbox image. You, if you guys want to want to send some uh, recommendation for tutorial just Twitter Facebook whatever it's all in the description you guys can choose what you want to communicate with me on uh, it doesn't really matter I, I, I pretty much respond to all, all the messages so this is what the Dropbox one looks like now if this was made in Java we would have to have some sort of swing component or Java effects component or something to make uh, to make this nice fancy GUI this is probably the best looking um, tray icon I've ever seen in my life so that's really saying something. Um, but as soon as the JDK releases the uh, the support for swing components in this, I'll blow this thing out of the water. This will be no problem to get, uh, you know, a better uh, a better uh, GUI, I guess you could say. The one we're going to be creating is similar to this one right here. It's just got two buttons. We're going to go with two, maybe three, uh, but some more functionality as well, showing you guys how to create error messages, warning info and uh, normal messages just for the user to see um, you know like this one here tells you when everything is fine it tells you if you got a virus something like that so let's go ahead and create a new project now I've, this is the fourth time I'm recording this video and I've already gone ahead created a simple GUI with four buttons these four buttons essentially trigger the warnings because um, there's nothing to trigger the warnings right now so I'm just gonna be using buttons to trigger them I've also made up two uh, two packages. One is called app package. I have two files in here. The one is called uh, display tray icon .java, and the other one is a start frame, which is this one right here. Then we have another folder called images or another package, and in that uh, package we have an icon called icon.png. Now this is a 16 by 16 image. I suggest you create your own uh, depending on your project. Now this J stands for the Javas for Project Javas. Uh, because I couldn't think of anything else. So you guys can go ahead and create anything that you want. I sort of got inspired from the vast one. You guys can see it's this nice orange color and this one's also orange. So it's pretty much the same color actually uh, with a J in it instead of an A. So that's my icon 16 by 16. Make sure it's that size so it displays correctly in this uh, in this little box. So now let's go to our display tray icon and while you guys are looking at this just pause the video for a second and copy down what I've typed out already. Like I said, this is the fourth time I'm recording the video. All four times, all three times I should say, have been over 32 minutes. So there's no ways I'm releasing a video that long because I'd even get bored watching it. So what we've done here is we've created a public class display tray icon. We've created a constructor called public display tray icon, obviously. And then in that constructor, we've uh, put in a method called show tray icon. We've created an object of uh, a method. Well, not really, but uh, that's just an object of this method right here. So in here, we've just created a public static void show tray icon, um, and we've put it inside this constructor. And then the last one's a little bit more complicated. We went with protected static image um, because we're going to be creating an image, and it's called create icon. Now we have two uh, two strings, two parameters. The one is the path to the icon, which will be slash images slash icon dot png, and the other is the description of that image. So that image would be uh, considered as the tray icon image, right? That's about it. So in here, we're going to type in URL, give a random name, so image URL. Now I've already added the imports for everything. So as uh, as you guys get errors, just click the little bulb icon and add in the correct imports. So URL image URL is equal to the name of the class that we are in, which is currently called display tray icon, right? So copy paste that dot class dot get resource. And in the brackets, we'll go the path of the resource, which in this case is the picture. So that path will be considered this path right here, which we'll be typing in the parameter uh, later on. So now we want to return the image, which will be return, right? And then in this return, we're going to type a new image icon. Once again, add in the import. 
after these two brackets you want to uh, after the three brackets i should say you want to type in dot oops dot get image and then in these two brackets for the image icon you're going to type in uh image url and then comma desc and that's it for that one now in the show tray icon this is where all the the, the cool stuff happens we're going to firstly check if your computer can support tray icon so we're going to type in an if statement right just a basic if statement so if we're going to put in a does not sign which is just the exclamation point and we're going to type in system tray dot is supported so if system tray is supported but remember we have this does not sign in the front so if system tray is not supported that's what it means then it'll print out an error and then it'll close the app so s out equals error your pc sucks and then system you know whatever you guys can put anything you want there return okay now this returns pointless for now but don't worry so now the first thing that we want to do is we want to create a um a variable on the top here to actually start displaying our our tray icon so we're going to type in static so we can access it from our frame uh static tray icon for so t-r-a-y icon give around variable name tray icon and then just put a exclamation mark at the end not exclamation mark semicolon then we're going to type in tray icon is equal to new tray icon and in these brackets we're going to actually assign the image using our method that we created which is the create icon method so we're going to type in create icon and then we have to specify two parameters the first parameter is the path to the image the second parameter is a description of what the image is used for so we're going to be using it for our tray icon and then the first one is a path to the image and in our case my case it's slash images slash icon dot png remember to put the extension at the end now the tray icon only supports a few extensions if you guys want a list of all of them i suggest uh, just looking up on the the sun documents the oracle documents um, it'll give you a list of supported uh, file types but i always use png it always works for everything um, everything and everything png is the way to go it's also for smaller file sizes you guys can use bitmap or gif as well so okay so we have that so far now what we need to do is we need to type in another variable so final uh, system tray give it a name tray is equal to oh is equal to system tray dot get system tray so that gets the system tray then the tray icon will be inserted into the system tray so now we're going to do that now so we're going to type in try sake. try catch and in the try, what we're going to do is we're going to type in tray dot tray dot add, and it'll automatically import a tray icon and stuff. So in here we're going to type in exception e, and then we're just going to let Nepins, you know, use a specific uh, exception. So now when we run our program, oh wait, hang on, it won't show anything because we didn't code the other stuff yet. Uh, make sure you select your main method to be the start frame, right? So in the source code for the start frame. When this app starts up, like right in the top, just above the constructor, we're going to type in uh, display tray icon, which is an object of our class, the display tray icon class, DTI, or whatever name you want to give it, I don't care, it doesn't really matter, equal to new display, I forgot new display tray icon. So that what's going to happen is when this frame starts up, it's going to automatically run this bit of code. Right, and it's got a constructor. So this constructor is going to start up this method called show tray icon. Show tray icon will check if it's supported, load it up in system tray, try it out, you know, do whatever it needs to do. So when we run it, you guys can see our system tray has popped up at the bottom right hand corner of our screen. I'll zoom in a bit just for this one screenshot so you guys can see what it's like. So when we close it over here, it also closes the uh, the system icon, the tray icon. Sorry. You guys can code it how you want. Um, it doesn't really matter up to you okay so now that we have that done what we want to do is we want to start adding components into into that tray icon so we can exit from there we can view a few pages uh, you know we can we can do some cool stuff so we need to create one more of these finals now the the, uh, the last one let's just type it in the front is a final pop uh, it's a pop-up menu right so pop up menu make sure you type it like how I do final pop-up menu 
uh, pop up is equal to new pop up menu. Damn it, I hate how it's so case sensitive. There we go. And then once we have that, all we have to do is we have to uh, get the pop up menu to actually register with the tray. So to do that, we simply say tray icon dot add. Uh, is it add? I think it's set. Set pop up menu. There we go. And it'll automatically add the pop up in there because NetBeans is a little bit smart. So the pop up menu is now registered and we can start adding components. So let's create a comment saying add components slash menu items. Okay. So what we can do here, we can type in menu item. So we're going to type in menu item and then we're going to create an item. So let's create an about item, right? So about item equals, come on, your type equals new menu item. And in these brackets, you just want to give the, give it a name. So we're going to call it about. That's what will show up when you click on the, click on the thingy. Okay, so we've created a new menu item called about. Now what we need to do is we need to populate, populate the pop up menu. So all we simply say is we say pop up dot add, and then you type in your menu item, which in this case is called about item, and that'll show up the about item. So let's click on play, right click on our, our uh, icon, and you guys can see we have the about. So we're going to create one more called the uh, exit, right? So once again, it's pretty much the same thing. This is how you add components. So we're going to create an exit item. One, two, three, four. And we're going to once again add it into our pop-up menu. Now remember, uh, Java reads from top to bottom. So whatever appears first will be shown on the top of the list. Whatever shows second will appear on the second, etc., etc. Okay, so now when we run this, we will have about an exit. Now this looks a bit stupid. Let's add a separator between the two because about an exit is not on the same thing. So in between pop up that add about item and pop up that add menu item or exit item, you want to type in pop pop up dot add separator, and then that will add a separator for you. So when you right click on it, you can see we have this nice separator in between. So let's just close that. So we have those two things. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to create a hover over, um, you know, you know when you hover over the thing, it gives you some info of what what app that is. Like this one tells you files up to date, blah blah. Origin tells you that, you know. Dropbox is nice. It tells you Dropbox 2.6 the version, and it tells you if it's up to date or not. So we can create a similar thing. So for Christy and I think that's his name. Uh, who left me a message? We can actually create one thing that replicates uh, Dropbox, even though it's a little, it's a little bit stupid. But I mean, I guess it's cool. So before everything, we're just gonna simply type in one line of code: tray icon dot. Um, what is it called? Tray icon dot. I think it's tooltip. Tooltip? No. I think it's set tooltip. Yeah. There we go. So you're gonna set the tooltip. And you can set the tooltip to be anything you want. So let's go ahead and copy what NetBeans, uh, not NetBeans, Dropbox has because uh, Christian, I think that's his name, I hope I, I hope I got it right, um, wants to know how to replicate sort of the Dropbox look and feel and, you know, their type of nice design. But this is the best we can do. So we're going to say version, version 1.6.21. And then we're going to put in slash n, right? So slash n, backslash n. And then uh, just type in the name of the project, so Project Jarvis or whatever it's called. So that'll create a tooltip. Oh, no point to exception. Oh my goodness, come on. That is because I typed it in before we actually created the tray icon. So type it in after these three lines of code, these three right here, this final system tray tray. Type it below that and then it should work just fine. There we go. So now when we hover our mouse over it, you guys can see the version and then Project Jarvis, which is the name of the app that's running. So it's similar to the Dropbox one. It looks much, it looks pretty cool. It's pretty cool. It looks much better than just plain, uh, you know, one-liners. So it looks a little bit high tech and you can right click and you can do whatever you want from there. So now that we have the tooltip, what we want to do is we want to actually add events so we can click on stuff. So let's create a bunch of events. Now before the try, uh, yeah, let's do it before the try and catch. 
Now we're going to be creating action listeners. So let's go with the, the about item first. So we're going to type in about item dot add action listener. And then in these brackets, we're going to type in new action listener. And you'll have to add the import for action listener. Open close brackets. And then you guys still, uh, can see you get an error. So if you just click on this bulb and type in implement all abstract methods, it'll implement the method for you. And it even got the correct, um, the correct thing that I wanted, which is action performed. Because when you click on the button, that leads to the public void action performed method, which is this one right here. And it'll perform whatever code you type in, in between these, uh, in between these two brackets right here. Sorry about that. Um, there we go. So in here, we just want to type in a J option pane. Now, I'm just going to copy and paste this from a separate uh, page that I have open, which has J option pane. And we're going to type in show message dialog null made by Mirror Sing. So when you click on it, it'll show up this J option pane that show message dialog. Now, just for a little bit of context, um, actually, you know what? Yeah, okay, let's just do it. Uh, it's already 17 minutes in. But um, NetBeans has uh, Java has a variety of different events that you can use. Mouse click, mouse press. I mean, we go over this in almost all our NetBeans design tutorials. So this is how you would type in a action listener without right clicking, going down to menu, uh, you know, without doing this method right here, without right clicking, events, action, action performed. That's ex exactly the same thing that we just typed, right? But it's it's created some generated code which you guys cannot see that handles. Uh, you know everything that we just typed but it uh, puts it in this nice little one-liner for us so that's how it works right here so now when you run this and you right click on it you guys can see it when you click on about it'll show up this little menu made by mirror saying now it's using the numbers look and feel not really the windows look and feel so in order to change that you want to change it in here so you just want to expand the look and feel settings code in the JFrame change numbers to windows and then that'll change the entire project to to use the windows look and feel so there we go you can see we're using windows 8 with the purple because my background's purple um, so that looks nice so now you want to do the same thing for the exit button right um, so once again copy and paste this or you can type it out if you just want to you know get familiar with the code but I'm I'm used to it so when you click on the exit one remember we had to change this about item to exit item. We're going to type in system dot exit, and in these brackets will be a zero, and then semicolon, and that'll exit the program. Now, I want you guys to take note of something. When we exit the program, um, sometimes what happens is the icon hangs around for a second or two. Now it does. It's not really happening now for some reason. Ooh. But sometimes it hangs around, and you don't want it to hang around because, I mean, the app is closed. So in order to make it close and close properly all you simply do is you type in tray dot remove you remove it from the system tray oops tray dot remove and then the tray icon so you remove the tray icon from the system tray to make sure that it's gone some apps don't get removed properly and it just hangs around for far too long five six seconds even after the app has ended so just to be a little bit more professional a little bit more efficient uh you know make it work well so that's that's how you handle those two and the next thing we're going to handle is uh, those error messages, right? These four error message, error warning, uh, info normal. So in order to display these messages, we have to create something new. Now, the thing that we need to create is a display menu, right? So in order to create one, we simply type in menu, give it a variable name. I'm going to call it display menu because that's what I use it for. Is equal to new menu, and then give the menu a name, which doesn't really matter what the menu name is, but just name it menu. Okay. So we're going to populate uh, the, the message display menu. Now, in case you're wondering what I'm talking about, my phone has got some problems when I connect it to my PC. It tells me error device not recognized. This is a display menu that we are creating right here. I may be mistaken because I didn't really understand what the what the documents are going on about. So if I did make a mistake, just leave it in the comments. You know, don't don't go nuts and you know, uh, cause a riot and stuff. Just leave a comment if I made a mistake. But, you know, this creates a display menu. So it automatically shows up a little menu with the display on it uh, directly from the icon. Right, so now that we have got the display menu, we simply populate the menu with the appropriate error code. Now, uh, the way we do this, we simply type in the item. So we need to create 
four more items, right? Um, four more menu items that won't be in the popup.add, but it'll instead go into the this this right here. So let's go ahead and create these four more uh, these four more uh, warnings, I guess. Okay, actually, you know what? I've already typed this out. Let me just copy and paste it, and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so I have these four menu items, right? And I've just added some text over there. It doesn't really matter because we're not going to populate the uh, the pop-up menu. We, it's not going to be shown, basically. So we're simply going to type in over here, display menu dot add. Oops. And we're going to add an error item just just for starters. Now, when we run it, you guys will see that the menu item won't actually appear. The uh, the error item doesn't actually appear yet because we haven't added it to the pop-up menu. However, it's still there. It's still there, uh, waiting for you to uh, get an error. So now that we have that, remember we created this variable on the top. That's so we can access the tray icon variable. So let's go into the start frame. Double click on the error button, or whatever. You, you might not have a button, but you can type this code anywhere you want. So we're going to type in display tray icon basically the class name dot tray icon so we're accessing that static make sure it's static so we can access it um, display tray icon and then in this class we can access this tray icon uh, variable so uh, tray icon dot display message now the first one is the caption the caption is error the caption is basically USB device is not recognized let me do my phone again you'll see it'll say uh, Let's go over this. This is the image. So this is a warning. Um, USB device when recognized. That's the the caption. And then the description is the last USB device connected. Blah 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 blah. Whatever. Okay. So we're gonna say error. Error with system. Okay. System error. That sounds better, doesn't it? So system error errors. System error. And then you want to type in the description. Your PC has encountered a vital is vital a word that I can use a vital error I don't know whatever and the last one's the, the message type which in this case is error so it's tray icon dot message type dot error make sure you type it in correctly it's not T it's the actual tray icon from the the methods from the tray icon class the tray icon dot message type dot error so let's run this when you click on the error button you guys will see an error pop up and you can see it says system error your PC has encountered a vital error now why is this Windows XP style I don't know but it has a settings button which is pretty cool as well so I mean it, it's awesome it's awesome it's really cool um, version you know nice very nice okay so what's next well the next thing to do is just to add warning info normal now I'm gonna do this in my own time and I'll just show you when I'm done Okay, so I've added a bunch of little comments, you know, funny joke comments, I guess. Um, okay, so the error one, you just replace message type dot, well, you don't replace anything, but you type in message type dot error. Then for uh, the warning, you replace error with warning for just the basic one, you know, like an info, info message, you replace it with info. And then the last one is just a normal message, uh, you replace it with none. So these should display the four. Uh, so this is the error. System error. Your PC has constant a fatal error. The warning looks like this. Not a fatal error, bro. It's got the the warning sign. Info. Uh, your PC is slow. You're a cheap bastard. Buy a new PC. Um, and then the last one is just a friendly message. What's up, homie? Uh, Holmes. It's Spanish. It's Spanish now. Um, but yeah, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Uh, White has the Windows XP style. I don't know. I don't know. Java. You know. You need to get up to date with the times. This is Windows 8, it should have the box look and you know, like a smaller freaking, I mean, come on, this looks like that, that clip guy from, you know, those the old Microsoft Office products, you know, that little clip, I'll put a picture there. Um, God, I'm old. Um, but yeah, okay, so that's it for this tutorial. Thank you for uh, watching, I'm so, I'm so tired. Okay guys, so that's it for this tutorial. Just wanna thank Christian, hope he got his name right. Uh, I'm not too sure what his name is actually, but uh, I haven't looked at my Twitter for ages. But if you guys do have a nice suggestion for me for a tutorial, please don't be afraid to leave it in the comment section below. Or better yet, uh, contact me directly because I got the messenger and I get messages like immediately. Uh, email works as well. 
you know, Twitter, Facebook, email, those three are very good. So anyways, if you guys enjoyed the tutorial, please don't forget to leave us a like, comment, and subscribe. And once again, thank you for the recommendation of this tutorial, and I'll see you guys tomorrow in the next video.